Hello, everybody. It's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I am live for night number two of painting our umbrella blooms design. We painted this one last night um, on a wooden round from the Dollar Tree, and this is how it turned out. Oh, let me get the string out of the way. This is how it turned out. We printed out a 12 inch template. We reduced the size by about 10%. And then we traced it on this wood round, added some details. And this is a really good represent representation of how somebody who's brand new to joining the Painters Clubhouse might choose to paint their design. Maybe they're a little bit of a beginner. They're not going to choose really detailed things to paint. And they might not have access to laser cut wood blanks. They might not financially been able, be able to afford to buy these just yet. So painting on things like th this from the Dollar Tree is really accessible. Um, so tonight we're going to take it one step further and we're going to paint it on an 18 inch laser etched door hanger. You can get these on our website at shopdoorhangers.com in five different sizes. This is the largest size, which would hang on your door. Hello, Sandy. Hi, Pam, Linda, and Yuna. Welcome, ladies. Um, and we're going to change the colors up. So last night we painted it very similar to the original design with all of the bright, you know, very eye-popping, eye-catching colors. Tonight we're going to take it back a little bit, tone it down a little bit, and do... Um, Something that looks a little bit more like uh, sunflowers in a blue umbrella with maybe a red accent flower. So let me know what you guys think about that. Hello, Amy. Hi, Suzette. Hello, Jane. Have any of you guys gotten to do any painting today? We've had a very chill day here at the house. Both kids had a friend spend the night. I say both. My third child, my oldest, uh, was out of town for a state competition and he just got back. Uh, but the other two decided to have friends over because my husband's also out of town. So I was just like, yeah, that'll entertain you. Go ahead. <laughs> and the girls uh, slept in the living room and had like a whole pillow fort thing going on. And the boys uh, holed up in the bedroom, but came out and went swimming, even though it's 60 degrees outside. But the pool is heated and they got in the pool. The girls eventually did, too. I thought they were crazy. But, you know, kids are immune to the cold, I think, when it comes to swimming. Not always, but when it comes to swimming, they'll jump right in. It does not matter. And I remember being that way when I was little. It's like, blah, 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 blah. I'll get used to it in a, in a second, <laughs> you know, when your teeth chatter until your body adjusts. Um, so anyway, it's been a busy, well, not busy. It's been a very relaxing uh, day today. We've just kind of been chilling and hanging out here. I did go live this morning. If you missed it at 930 and I shared, um, we did a door hanger hall of fame and so essentially we've never done that before but it was kind of fun it was like a slideshow presentation of door hangers that we've done in the past in the painters clubhouse some of my favorites i talked about the techniques we taught in them and all of that kind of stuff and so if you're curious what kind of designs we've taught in the clubhouse in the past our clubhouse designs are generally kept exclusive for at least a year some of them have been exclusive the entire time and so um it really gives you an idea of like what you get access to in the member library when you join. And so after you watch that live or this live tonight, if you're interested in joining the clubhouse, we would love to welcome you. The doors are closing next Friday. So if you've been thinking about it, you need to get off the fence and decide to do it. Um, I'll be answering your questions tonight as we paint. Uh, what questions or comments do you guys have right now? Let's see. Um, Amy said, I did not. I had potted plants and running errands. I'm <laughs> thinking about doing some painting though. Suzette finished her Americana truck and is now putting on some small designs for the welcome sign. Uh, if you painted that Americana truck, be sure and pay, post your picture inside the Facebook group so that Megan can put it in our truck show slideshow tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Um, hello, Heather. Hi, Pam. I see Lucy's here. She said, you must not drink coffee. You have a steady hand. I don't drink coffee. I do drink um, like a little water, like flavor packet in the mornings that has energy in it. But that's the only like caffeine I have all day. And once it's gone, it's gone. I'm now just drinking straight, like drink mixed lemonade. It's not, it's not supercharged or anything. <laughs> Bonnie says that was a great live this morning. It, I wanted to paint, but yard work called my name. Um, yeah, and then after that, we did a Painters Clubhouse interview with uh, another member, Miss Nancy Beeson. So if you love those, how many of you guys have been enjoying the Painters Clubhouse um, member interviews? Uh, we talked about maybe doing those at least once a month, maybe even more frequently than that. Um, I don't know that I'd be able to fit it in more often than that, but at least once a month would really be nice just to kind of let you guys 
hear what's going on with folks um, in the clubhouse and what they're doing. This is what I was talking about last night when I said you can let your paint dry out and then you can peel it out of your little ice cube tray. This is the one that I used last night and the paint is pretty much dried up in it because I left the lid off of it. I knew I'd be using different colors tonight and there wasn't much left in here anyway. So I'm just going to peel this out before we get started. Janet's loving the interview. So is Suzette. Hey, Teresa. Hello, uh, Dina. <laughs> I'm glad you guys have been enjoying them. It is really nice to put a face with the name. I agree with that. Um, it helps us kind of get to know, you know, different members of the community. And then when you go to live events and things like that, it, you know, helps you feel like, you know, a few people once you get there, even if they don't really know you, you know them because you've seen them in the interviews and you might know a thing or two about them and you guys can like connect. All right. I didn't get it absolutely cleaned out, but I got the good majority of it enough that we can work on this. <laughs> I've always thought, wouldn't it be cool to like save these and do some kind of like mixed media art with them? I don't know. I've seen people do stuff like that before, but I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing that. So I'm not going to save up my scraps on the off chance that I'll use them. Uh, hey, Mary G. Um, let's see. I'm guessing this, is it Dixie Doodling Mermaid? She said, I didn't get to cut my umbrella. I had a paint party this morning, so I'm just going to relax and watch tonight. I understand. Okay, let me get all these little crummies off here. We're going to start with our umbrella because remember last night, uh, I was like, I should have started with the polka dots on the umbrella. Um, and I'm using a new color that I've never used on a live before. This is a, one of DecoArt's new 2024 paint colors. It's called Stormy. It reminds me a little bit of, well, where is it in my thing? It reminds me a little bit of Victorian blue, but it's a little more, I don't know, a little darker. So this is Victorian blue. I use it a lot. Um, so if you don't have Stormy, you can use Victorian blue. That's the blue that we used on the Americana truck design. Um, and we're just going to use our three quarter inch wide flat tip brush from the new Southern Adornment Signature brush set. If y'all have not heard, the big news was that Friday we released our first ever custom paintbrush set. Um, I have been dreaming of coming out with my own paintbrush set for years and I finally got it, finally made it happen. I've been waiting months for these brushes to come in and when they finally did, I was like a kid in a candy store. I could not wait to open the package and check them out. And then I've been waiting and dying because I've like wanted to wait until a certain time to release them to you guys. So I've been sitting on this secret for a while now. And so many of you guys must have been waiting for me to sell these because y'all flocked to the store to buy them. I have several that I've already shipped out and several more that I need to ship out on Monday. So if you're wanting yours to go out on Monday, you can go grab it at the link up in the video description at shopdoorhangers.com and I'll ship yours out on Monday. We also sell the little ice cube tray. So if you need an ice cube tray, you can add that to your order. Of course, if you're a new Painters Clubhouse sister, we have something called a starter pack that you might want to grab that also comes with like a Painters Clubhouse apron and a water cup um, and stuff like that. It also has the brushes and the ice cube tray, uh, paint pen, things like that in it. And so for those of you who are new Clubhouse members, you might need the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> Plus, there's an option to grab uh, five rounds for a really great deal along with that starter pack. And that deal is only available to our clubhouse members. So the starter kit is $65. And the um, if you add on the wood rounds, it's $100. So that makes those wood rounds only $7 each. That is a steal. That's like half the price they sell them for at Hobby Lobby. Okay. Um, I need some more of this Stormy. That's the name of the color. We're going up here in between these flowers and just blocking all this color in, getting our base coat going. We're probably going to do two coats on this color. And then we're going to do our polka dots. And I'm thinking instead of white polka dots, I may just lighten this color with a little bit of white and do dots on it that way. Last night when I was tracing this design onto the wood round, I forgot to trace these two leaves. So if these two designs look different, that's why. Am I too late to enter my truck? No, Tammy. Go post a picture of it tonight inside the Americana Truck group. Um, Megan is pulling those photos in time for our slideshow tomorrow. So there is still time if you get it in tonight. 
Pilostratus. Vivid blue is close to Stormy Sheila says. I might have that color around here somewhere. Um, I don't use it very often, so I don't know. Did this come with a template already on it? Do you mean the design lasered on it? That uh, it. So the designs that we sell in our shop have the lines lasered on them. So they're like gently carved into the surface. So if I were to like prime this whole thing and coat it all one color, I'd still be able to see those lines through the paint. That's what I really like about them. Oh, Bonnie, I am using um, my little heat it craft tool. This is from Ranger Inc. It's linked in my Amazon favorites and the Amazon's linked up in the video description if anybody needs one of those. But I really like that it's got this little this little loop on the outside of the handle because I just hook it right on this little hook on the side of my desk. And so it's super handy. And then it's plugged in up, up under the desk. It's probably my favorite must have craft item in the whole, the whole room here. Cause I was using a hairdryer for a long time and that took longer cause the hairdryers don't get as hot and it was crazy loud. This little heated craft tool is whisper quiet so I can continue to paint while I talk. Okay. Put a second coat of stormy on this. Uh, see, Sheila says, where's that package at? I couldn't find the starter package today. Um, it is linked in the powwow video that I did in the clubhouse yesterday. Um, if I don't forget, I will, um, post a, post a link to it in the clubhouse after this live is over so that you guys can find it. Cause you can't find it just by searching for it in the shop. Since it's only available to clubhouse members, we couldn't put it in the search. Can't get that lid open. I made a mess with this. I've already got it all up, all up on the lid. It's so much quieter. Yeah, it is really good money spent for sure. My hair will not stay tucked behind my ear. <laughs> Amy said, I noticed you forgot the leaves and it was killing me. Uh, you'll, one thing you'll notice about me, if you follow me for any amount of time, is I'm not a perfectionist. I don't let much get me all tore up and excited. It takes a lot to really rock the boat with me. <laughs> and I was just like, whoops, oh well, moving on. <laughs> I am not a perfectionist. I am not OCD about hardly anything, especially not painting. So if you're OCD or a perfectionist, we're just going to have to adjust to one another, I guess, <laughs> which I live with one. So I know exactly what it's like when he sits and paints with me. It's almost painstakingly slow because he's trying so hard to do it perfectly. And I'm like, just slap the paint on it. It'll be fine. <laughs> but I do feel like it takes that kind of person and this kind of person, all different kinds of people to make the world go around because there are certain things that require perfectionism and attention to detail. And those things are not things you want me in charge of. And he knows that my husband knows that. Oh, sorry. Uh, Urban Barn Crafts and DIY says, I'm sorry. I mean, the surface, is that something that can be purchased with the design on it or would we still have to draw it? Yeah, when you buy this in our shop, it'll come like this with the design on it. Um, we don't sell them, you know, like this without the design. If you're wanting the template, hold on, it's down here. Oh, goodness. If you're wanting the template that you can trace on your own wood blank, that also is for sale in our shop for $7. Um, and it comes with the laser cutting file if you have a laser machine. And the template comes in like four different sizes. You can print it out at like six inch, eight inch, 12 or 18, depending on if you're going to use it for like a tiered tray, an attachment, an ornament, or like a wreath attachment or a door hanger. <laughs> Just say I don't do perfect. No, I definitely don't. Uh, Mary, the umbrella pattern is up in the video description. I'll just grab that link for y'all and drop it real quick. Uh, it is right here. So if you go here, the template is the part that you print out yourself that I just held up. This is the template. This is the blank. So, you know, depending on what you're wanting, we ship these. Those you just download and print at home. <laughs> the blue paint does cover pretty well. That was two coats. It looks pretty good. I like it. 
<laughs> Amy, that's funny. She literally measures everything. She says she has a kid, who, a work kid who is OCD. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, I just saw Janet's comment. Michael is my husband. She said, Michael is so sweet at Painters Clubhouse Live. He stopped me at the end and asked if I had fun. Every time he will tell everybody, as long as everybody had fun and had a good time, that's the goal of all of this. And so he's keeping priorities straight. He knows what's important. We want everybody to enjoy themselves at our live events. Sheila says, do the truck pictures have to be under that post where you talk about the prey? Um, no, not necessarily. They just need to be posted in the group so that Megan can find them. I think it's con convenient and helpful for her if you will also post it in the comments underneath the parade because it makes it where she doesn't miss it, you know? Okay, we're going to dry this and just speed it up a second. <laughs> and then we're going to mix a little bit of white with our blue to make a polka dot. Now, I could just pick another color to do polka dots with. But for some reason, like, I don't always choose a blue that has the right tint. And so it always works out better for me. So if you struggle with picking colors and things like that, and you want to do a polka dot of a similar color on the color you just used, the easiest way to do that is to just add a little, if, especially if it's like a lighter version, is to just add a little bit of white to the color you just used and mix it up and start there. Okay, I'm going to get a paintbrush here and just use the bottom of the brush handle to mix this. I prefer that method instead of using the paintbrush bristles because anytime you use a paintbrush to mix, it will get all up in the bristles right up here to the top of the metal ferrule. And then it's almost impossible to wash it all out. And I feel like over time doing that again and again ruins your brushes. Okay. So once I mix it up with the brush handle, I'll just wipe it off with a paper towel or a baby wipe. Okay, here's my little sponge pouncer. This is a Martha Stewart sponge pouncer. Uh, my little cheap sponge pouncers that I usually use aren't here. Well, actually, shoot. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to fit that in there. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. Let me see if I've got a slightly smaller one. And I don't. Not in here. I think all of my... Oh, I know. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I forgot. There's one in here. This has got all of our little starter pack goodies in it. Like I was saying, it's got like a little painter's clubhouse water cup. And it's got sponge pouncers and stuff. So I think I'll use that one. It's got four sponge pouncers in the little starter pack. And so I'll just claim that starter pack as mine. Um, this one fits perfectly in our little egg cartons. So I'm going to dip in there and then I'm going to scrape on the edge of the egg carton. So the excess paint goes down in there. And once I've scraped, this little sponge doesn't look like it has much on here. Let's scoot this over. Okay. We're just going to do little gentle twists to do our polka dots. And if you remember last night, the rule to doing polka dots is to do them in groups of three so that you can draw like an invisible triangle between your dots. If you've ever struggled with doing polka dots and getting the spacing right, this is like the best way. Um, because it's going to always ensure that you don't have like an awkward dot in a place where you don't want it. So between these three, I know the third one would probably be here, which is on the leaf. So I'm not going to do it. Between these, we'll go here. And then here. Hang on, I need a little more paint. Dip in there. Scrape it off. You can dot over another dot if you didn't turn out right. Do another one, another one. And so there's probably one halfway right here. Okay. And then right here, my spacing between them might not always be like if you took a ruler out, it's not always going to be perfect, but I'm just eyeballing it. And I'm just visualizing the little triangles between all my dots. There we go. Maybe do a little half C right here. Oh, I didn't quite get it. And then that one's not really going to show, but there might be one right here. Like I invis I visualized that there'd be another one right here. So this would be the third part of the triangle. So that one's right there. 
but this is why I wanted to do the dots before I painted the flowers because this one got on the flower. And last night when we did this, I had to get a baby wipe and clean it off the flower every time. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just save ourselves a little bit of trouble and do it um, before we paint our flowers. So once that's done, don't let this dry out. Drop it in your water until you're done painting and you can go rinse it out later. Hey, Judy. Sam says, my friend from school is painting the Americana truck with me right now. He's not the most crafty. It's hilarious. I'm glad you guys are having a good time. Yep. Susan says, don't put the cup in the dishwasher. We're talking about that little painter's clubhouse water cup. Charlie put hers in the dishwasher and the paint started fading on it already. So don't do that. Um, Deanna says, Dina says, I'm finishing up my truck and watching you painting with my... Uh, on my birthday. Happy birthday, Deanna. Dina. I keep saying, <laughs> keep saying your name wrong. So sorry. Y'all wish Dina happy birthday. I wish we could all sing to you. <laughs> Charlie's so funny. She just had her ninth birthday and she told me, she said, mama, it's so awkward when everybody sings to you. Like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> I said, well, baby girl, it's awkward for everybody when they get the happy birthday sung to them. I said, just smile and stand there. I said, it won't last long and then it'll be over. <laughs> oh, it makes me giggle. Okay, we're going to let that finish drying up and we're going to paint the handle of our umbrella. And I went with a darker gray tonight on this one. This is the zinc color. In keeping with toning down our colors a little bit. The one we used last night was gray sky and it's a really light gray. And so I was like, I want to kind of make this one just a little bit more mellow, a little darker. So that's what we're going with. <laughs> Look at all those birthday wishes. Oh, Susan, did yours fade? I'm so sorry. I think I told everybody don't want them in the dishwasher, but you know, not everybody. Um, probably got the message or heard me. <laughs> I'm going to spritz this with a little bit of water because I feel like this paint is really thick and I'm having a hard time getting it to to want to go anywhere. I'm not making any progress. I love my little water spritzer. Makes me happy. How many of you guys just joined the clubhouse this week during the Americana truck workshop? Do we have any newbie hashtag new PC sisters watching tonight? I would say, do we have any old painters clubhouse sisters watching also, but that's not very nice. Maybe we should call you guys a vintage PC sisters. <laughs> uh, the girls who've been in it for like six years, they lovingly call themselves the OGs <laughs> like original gangsta, you know, or you could go original girl, original girly. <laughs> um, and Dixie says, I've never liked people to sing happy birthday to me too. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we can start painting our flowers now. Actually, I might want to do a little bit of a shade or highlight on our, on our little umbrella handle. So while it's still moist here, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of white on my brush. That was probably too much. Let's, let's tone it down a bit. I want to do a little bit of a shade in a little bit of white to kind of like make it look not so flat. So bear with me while I kind of swoop this in here. I'm dipping in a little bit of that gray too, because I kind of got too much white on my brush, but I kind of wanted it to look artsy, artsy fartsy. Go back with a little gray and soften this up, make it look a little bit like it's rounded right here and then round it down this way. Y'all wanna hear something funny? I have never watched Grey's Anatomy before. And I was looking, I was like needing to like just zone out for a little while earlier. So I was looking on Netflix for something to watch and I was like, you know, Grey's Anatomy's on here and I've never watched it and everybody says it's so good. What if I just gave it one episode? One episode. I'll watch it. Season one, episode one. We'll see if it hooks me. And I'm already like, I want to go watch episode two <laughs> as soon as my live's over. So I have only ever seen one total episode of Grey's Anatomy. The very first one. And I'm ready to go watch another one. So I guess I'm hooked already. I don't know how many. I don't even. Isn't it still on the air? I don't even know how many seasons there are. 
but apparently I'm going to have plenty to watch for a while because I think it's been on a while. I know I have been missing out. There's no telling. I just realized I asked y'all a question, didn't follow up. Sarah said, did I hear that if we did the truck workshop, we could save $10 on our first month? Yes. Sarah, go into the truck workshop Facebook group and in the guides tab, there's a special link to give you $10 off. Um, hey, Danelle, you dyed your daughter's hair. How fun. <laughs> Uh, you joined earlier this week. Welcome. She says, there a way I can comment under my name and said, yeah, you'll just need to like in Facebook, switch back to your personal profile, like log in as your personal profile. And then, oh wait, no, we're not on Facebook, are we? <laughs> we're on YouTube. I know. I don't think so. I think it's like, w unless you have a personal YouTube account that's not like branded under your business. Lisa's been a PC sister since March 23. Donna says, I'm old. And yes, an older PC member. <laughs> Sheila Garvin signed up on Wednesday. Welcome. Hey, Lori, you made it. Paula says she's an older PC member. Heather, you hadn't missed out on much yet. We're painting the Umbrella Blooms design again, and we're changing the colors up this time. We're going with more of like sunflowers and a blue umbrella. Um, okay. Lots of Grays fans here. I, I, I don't tell me what happens. Oh my word. 19 seasons. I don't know if I'm down for this kind of commitment. This is going to have me busy for a few years. Season 20. Okay. So it's still on like there's, there's not been a finale or like a final season. Like they're just going to keep on making them. It's, it's like a soap opera at this point. Your daughter has watched them from the beginning to the current probably five times. Oh my, it must be good then. Okay, I guess I'm in it. I don't know. I'll, I'll start watching it. <laughs> I've only watched one episode, but I thought it was pretty good. I, I kind of liked the, I thought it was really funny because back then, I don't know, 20, I guess if it's 19 years old, then it started in like, I, I looked at my watch to see what year it is. <sighs> That means it probably started in 2005. Um, and not everybody had cell phones back then. Like the doctors had pagers, which I thought was really funny. Oh, okay. This is the last season. So are they trying to just round it out at 20 and say we're done? I figured they had to find a stopping point eventually. Okay. I chose sunset gold for the sunflower color. I may also blend a little bit of white into the center of these petals. So as I paint each petal, I may pick up a little bit of white to kind of highlight it. My boys are all in the kitchen being noisy. Don't, don't feel like you're the oddball. You've never watched it either. I've watched every single season of Survivor. But then again, I started that when I was in high school. Survivor's been on a long time. It was something that my parents and I used to watch together. Um, it, you know... When you're a teenager, there's not a lot of shows you really like that you and your parents both really like. And so that was like one show that we all loved. So we would watch that together. What are y'all doing in there? Do you hear them? They're wild as guineas. Um, you're hooked on The Resident. Oh, I hadn't seen that one either. Sam, this one is not in the clubhouse. This is just one that's in our shop. It's called Umbrella Blooms. I did link it up in the video description if you want to check it out. If you're a Template Club member, this was in the Template Club in March. So, Template Club members already have this design. Have any of you guys actually painted this one before, before we started doing the three ways? I just thought it was just the cutest thing, and I hadn't seen very many people paint it, so I was like, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna make it a good one that everybody wants to paint. I got a little too much white on that brush. We're going to redistribute that. Oh, Susan painted it. <laughs> Dixie, the same thing happened to us. My brother just started that one recently also. <laughs> going down a rabbit hole with Grace. I probably am. I've heard rumors about it as far as like what happened between a couple of the characters and I'm trying, I'm intentionally trying not to remember what I, I had seen or whatever, because I'm like, I don't want it to be spoiled for me. If I watch it, I want it to be new information. No spoilers. So, okay. This 
and this might be bother some OCD people. It's not gonna bother me. Um, <laughs> this flower right here has rounded petals, while all the while the other ones have pointed petals. So this is gonna be an uh, more like a odd looking sunflower because it doesn't have the pointed tips. I could round it out or make it pointed, I suppose. I would have to go outside the laser etched lines. So if y'all think that's a good idea, that's what I'll do. That way you can kind of see that it's okay to be outside the lines. It's okay. Okay, there's our base coat. I'm going to throw down a little white now. I feel like throwing a little white in there to kind of highlight the petals also keeps you from feeling like you have to do three coats of yellow. <laughs> make it pointed. Pamela says make it pointed, please. Okay. Let me do a little, little bit of white too. That way it covers the blue. So we'll just kind of bring it to a point here and then curve it back. We're fudging it. Is that better? <laughs> I was going to say we can do it on this one too, but we're fixing to paint over that most of that because this flower is going to be yellow also. I love hearing the boys in the kitchen like goofing around with each other because my, like I said, my oldest son has been out of town since Wednesday and Brett, my middle son, has been missing him. And so they haven't had, um, they're like best friends and they just haven't had any time together. And so I love hearing them goof off together. It's like, I'll tease Brett and say, you miss your brother, don't you? And he's like, no, I don't. But then when you hear them like goofing around together, I'm like, yeah, you missed him. It's sweet. Hang on, we need more yellow. What's the template? What is the template member? I think you mean template club. Template Club is separate from Painters Clubhouse. It's something completely different. Essentially, you can get, um, you can buy templates in bulk by buying, or by joining the Template Club and you get all the templates we release every month for one low cost. So normally we come out with 20 to 25 designs in a month, um, depending on how many Fridays there are. If there's five Fridays, it's 25 that month. Um, but we, uh, sorry, I can't paint and talk apparently right now. Um, it's $42 a month. And if you're a clubhouse member, you can save 20% on that. So there's like a special discount link over in the clubhouse. Okay. I'm going to go back over this and make this, try to make this look a little more pointed now. Of course, when we go to do like highlighting and things like that and like lines, I can really accent that a little bit more. Okay. Oh, I need to fix this little spot right here. I didn't do any white in it right here where it kind of goes between the petals. Okay. Um, is it the new grays? It's the original grays from 2000 and whatever, five. It's old. It was season one, episode one that I watched. <laughs> Sam said I started doing it without a template. Now I regret it. No, just go for it, Sam. Yours will be unique. Yeah, Template Club does not have a Facebook group. It does not come with any painting lessons. It's literally just the templates. Uh, Nicole says Template Club's well worth it, especially if you do venture markets or paint parties. Yes. Oh, thank you. You added your name to your business name. That does make it easier for me to figure out. I was like, is that Dixie that was doodling mermaid? Dixie came on here underneath her um, business page one day, I think, and I kept getting you two mixed up. So um, you might have to give advice to the one that was urban DIY or whatever. <laughs> so how to change your name. Uh, what was I going to say? Sorry. I'm distracted tonight. Um, we're talking about something. Oh, venture markets and paint parties is what you said. Yeah. Cause if you're a template club member, you can kind of like, even if you don't paint all of those, you can take the um, kind of like cover sheet from each month and put them in like a catalog. And then you have like a catalog of designs that people can buy from, or um, you can teach at paint parties. And so it makes it to where you really have like a lot of designs at your fingertips to offer your customers. Plus it's a tax write off. Okay. There's a couple spots where I did get a little wily with my blue and got it all over the, the petals. So I'm having to go back and like 
put another coat on a couple of those spots and then also on my little tips where I extended out my petals right here. A little bit more yellow. There's another spot that the blue was not covering. I may have to dry it to get it to, if you feel like you keep touching up the same spot and it's not fixing it, dry it and then touch it up again. Cause otherwise you're just pushing the paint around and I get impatient and sometimes I even do it too. And I'm like, why am I doing that to myself? Just hit, just hit the hairdryer for just a second and you'll be able to touch it up. Saves you so much time. There we go. Let me touch up this spot too. <laughs> oh, Leanne. Okay, good. Um, Nicole says, I use the front covers. Okay, so the template club comes with like a cover sheet every, every month. She uses those to advertise what she can offer for anyone wanting to do custom door hangers. That's a great idea. Uh, the yellow is Sunset Gold. It was one of the 2023 deco art paint colors and it's quickly become one of my favorites. If you don't have this one, this one is almost the same. It's slightly more sunny than Marigold. I quit keeping Marigold because I liked this tone just a little better. Okay, um, let's do this flower. Then we'll do our greenery and our tops. This flower, I wanted a red, but I wanted a red that wasn't like red, red, <laughs> if that makes any sense. This is watermelon slice. It's got a touch of pink in it. And so I wanted it to be a little bit softer than a traditional red. Decor actually thought about getting rid of this color. And I was like, no, no, no. I spoke up at the advisory meeting. I was like, do not get rid of watermelon slice. I love that color. And several other people, Miss Elizabeth Stoll and a few others were like, no, no, no. We love watermelon slice. Please keep it. I'm listening to what my boys are talking about. <laughs> I wish I could just be a fly on the wall sometimes. <laughs> I don't know what they're even talking about. Uh, um, what other questions do you guys have? We are done with the after hours Zoom calls. We wrapped up the last one of those last night. So if you enjoyed the Zoom calls and you think you would like to do that again, um, hop on the paint the Painters Clubhouse Zoom paint parties. We'll be having another one. Um, I, I don't know if the next one is in May. Somebody may have to look at the calendar and tell me if there's another one in August and April, but I don't think there is. I think we're waiting until May for the next one. Um, but it's your chance to hop on with some other PC sisters, turn on your camera if you like, and sit and chat and talk about things while you paint together. So if you want to have your own little personal craft paint party night at home, you can do that with the ladies in the clubhouse on their Zoom paint party nights. Have the boys come answer questions? I should. Okay, so Danelle, I get what you're saying. She said, I wish Deco Art would get rid of all the sheer colors. Um... The sheer colors do serve a purpose for other types of painting, not necessarily for like what we do, but there are certain types of painting like with canvas art and mixed media and stuff where you do want a transparent color. And so what we suggested was that instead of getting rid of the transparent colors, that they have something on the bottle that indicates that this color is a transparent color. For instance, let me find it. This one, Paradise Green. This is a 2023 paint color. It's a beautiful color, but it has a lot of transparency to it. So I almost never use it. Now, uh, mint, teal mint is almost the same color. So I wouldn't even buy this one if you want opaque colors. But we suggested that they at least put something like on the label here, like underneath or something that says transparent. And so they did take that into advisement. I don't know when or if they're ever going to implement that, but it would be super helpful to those of us who prefer opaque colors. <laughs> Elizabeth says the Zoom paint parties are so much fun. I think so too. Um, Danielle says she started marking hers with sheer on the lid. That's a good idea. You like indicate it. Uh, something else you can do, which you may already know this, Danielle, is to... 
make color swatch sheets of all your colors. So you can see instantly like fuchsia pop and strawberry are pretty transparent compared to some of the other colors. Ultraviolet and aquamarine blue, both of those are somewhat transparent. I can just instantly see which ones because I do the same number of like swipes. There's the paradise green that I just talked about. That one right there compared to teal mint over here. It's almost the same color, but teal mint covers way better. So if you make little color swatch sheets like this, it definitely helps you see which ones are transparent, which ones aren't. What's a really good dark primitive red color? Hmm. Let me look. I don't have very many of that color. So let me see if I have anything to recommend. Otherwise somebody in the comments might be able to recommend. Maybe tomato red or Santa red. That's these two. Either one of these. Um, I don't have a lot of these darker reds. Country red probably, but I don't really know. Um, some of the ladies might be able to uh, tell us. There's a chart on Deco Arts page that tells which colors are transparent, semi-opaque or opaque. Oh, you guys have done a deep dive on the Deco Art page. I did not know that was even on there. And somebody told me the other day that there is uh, something on the Deco Art page that recommends colors that work well together for like highlighting and shading. I was like, I need to check that out. Uh, Nicole, we shared it in a frab, a, a frab five, a fab five recently. Let me go grab the link for you. Um, I think I also shared it on a live earlier today because I feel like I'm looking this up for the second time today. Um, but I've also talked about it a lot here lately. So everybody's been wanting it. Um, it's on Sandy McTeer's website. Here it is. DecoArt Color Swatch Printables. So you're going to go to her site, scroll down to the second line of products. It's going to be right there. You're going to add it to cart. It's free and just check out and you'll be able to download it right there. I just realized when I copy and sorry, sorry, when I copy and pasted that, it did not put a space between the URL and the name. So then it wasn't clickable. So there you go. Country red is darker. I thought it was opaque. And then I painted, I painted it over a teal blue. So it's not opaque. You like Tuscan red? Okay. Um, I feel like my watermelon slice could use a second coat. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll move on. Does anybody have any more lingering questions about the Painters Club House? If you're sitting on the fence and not sure whether or not you're, this is the right time to join, um, let's talk about why that might be. If you're afraid that you're not going to be able to do some of the product projects, a lot of times people fear like that they're too much of a beginner, that they wouldn't be able to do it because they don't have enough expertise. Maybe they feel like they're just a crafter, not a painter. Let me just tell you right now. You do not have to be any experienced at all to join the clubhouse. I mean, we have so many people who start out in there and they've only ever done like scrapbooking or card making and they've never really done door hanger painting. They're brand new to it. That's totally fine. Um, if it's money and you're afraid you might not be able to afford it month after month and you're like, I don't want to join just to have to cancel. I would say if you've got the money to do it at least one month, give it a shot because this is what might happen. You might sign up. And then find out that your neighbor wants to buy a door hanger and you can sell it to her for $35. Well, that right there almost covers your cost of the clubhouse. And then you might find out that, you know, a couple more people want to buy a door hanger. And if you can sell just one door hanger a month, it's going to offset your cost. And then you're learning to paint at no extra cost to you. I mean, you're going to have to buy a few supplies if you don't have anything. But Elizabeth Douglas was just saying this earlier. She said, sell one door hanger a month and it will cover your your membership fee. And then a few months down the road, you might just be teaching paint parties or setting up at a craft fair and selling more. And then you've got enough money to pay for the entire year. If you're, you know, going to be a lifer with us and join for a long period of time, like a lot of these ladies do. And so I don't want you to talk yourself out of it just because you're a little bit afraid of what the future might hold or whatever, because there are lots of things we don't do because of fear. And we let that hold us back. But sometimes to do the things that are worth doing the most, you have to kind of like jump out and leap out and do the thing. Step out in faith. Do it scared. If it's uh, a fear of not having enough time to do it, 
you just need to dedicate a few, um, a couple hours, maybe every month to sitting down and painting with us or on your own, watch a replay and sit down and paint. You can have a dedicated space in your home where you keep your craft supplies. And even if you only have 15 or 20 minutes here and there, you can go down there, relax. It's almost like meditating. Just sit down with your paintbrush, do a little bit of painting. 15 minutes will probably turn into an hour and then you'll be like, oh man, I really should go to bed. <laughs> But that's how nice it is to have something like this that you can escape to. It's like having a really good book that you can't put down. But it, you don't want to put down the paintbrush is what the deal is with this. And so, you know, you'll be constantly looking for. Just like when you finish a good book, you'll constantly be looking for the next one to start. That's the way it is with door hangers. Every time you paint one, you're going to be looking for the next one to paint. Uh, Becky, I printed my color swatch thing on cardstock. Teresa says the monthly projects are the best. I sat on the fence way too long. I have learned so much. Go for it. You will love it. Thank you for that, Teresa. Uh, I'm not sure who this is because it says Facebook user, but it says I was on the fence for several years. I've been a PC sister for approximately two years now, and it's been on the be best decision ever. I don't know why I waited. That is the common theme. I keep hearing everybody say is I wish I hadn't waited or I wished I'd joined sooner or I don't know why I waited. So there are lots of things that hold us back, that make us wait, that make us not do the thing that we know we should do for ourselves. Maybe it's guilt. Maybe you feel guilty spending money on yourself when you're like, well, that money could go toward, you know, I don't know, buying new clothes for your kid or whatever. Um, if your kids are like mine, you can buy new clothes and they're going to shove them to the back of the closet and not wear them anyways. <laughs> I fuss all the time at my boys. I'm like, where is that new sweater I bought you? Why aren't you wearing it? <laughs> and they're like, I don't like it. It's itchy <laughs> or whatever it is. Danelle says, I lose track of time when I paint. I accidentally went to bed at 2 a.m. this morning. It does. It happens, especially to me whenever I turn on Netflix or something and I'm just like zoned out or I won't say zoned out. I am in the zone and I'm painting and I'm just listening to TV Next thing I know, I'm like, oh my goodness, is it really 1 a.m.? And I'm still painting. But that's, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of nice to just lose yourself in something like that that you enjoy doing so much. This is Hauser Light Green, by the way. I'm using this on the petals. Again, I could have gone with a more bold green, but I wanted to go with a nice soft green that wouldn't overpower some of the other colors on this door hanger. Karen says, I put off reading the Bible. Oh, yeah, I do that too, Karen. I'll sit there and think I really should go get my Bible bag right now and just sit here and read for a bit. And next thing you know, I pick up my phone and I start scrolling something or I think I'll check my email and I open my phone. Next thing you know, I'm scrolling Facebook and I'm like, I meant to read my Bible. Put your phone down, Tamara. So I've learned not to even pick up my phone in the morning until I've done my Bible study. Otherwise, it just probably won't happen because I'll get caught up in work. And then I won't ever, it won't ever, my priority won't ever happen. And some days I'm better at it than others. Some days I roll out of bed and I look at my phone when I shouldn't even look at it. I don't even unlock it. I just look at the lock screen and I'm like, oh, that needs my attention. And the next thing you know, I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. But we're not perfect, are we? We, we all mess up. We all fall short. But God forgives us. <laughs> we just all we got to do is keep trying better next time judy loves books on uh, recorded i started to say books on tape that shows my age uh she loves recorded books like audiobooks while she crafts i like audiobooks when i'm driving love them especially if i have a long road trip and i'm by myself i'll pick out a good audiobook and just lose myself in the story <laughs> elizabeth has actually fallen asleep painting before <laughs> Dixie said they need a Netflix category. Easy to follow in painting. Yeah, something you can listen to without having to look at. Because there are several times when I'd have to back the story up. When I didn't see whatever it was they were showing us without, you know, verbally saying it. <laughs> Pam said her husband will say, Woman, are you going to spend all night down there in her craft room in the basement? Jessica's a true crime junkie. My friend Sarah Williams is a true crime junkie, too. I've gotten hooked on this show on, um, it's kind of true crime, but it's also like 
it's the story retold. So it's not documentary style. It's like TV series style. Have you guys watched Dr. Death on Peacock? Ooh, that show. It's provocative. Like, and I don't mean like sexually provocative. I mean like it's a, it's, 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 it's a horrifying that a doctor could get away with what this guy was doing. And I don't want to ruin the story for you because it's pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, Dr. Death on Peacock, there's two seasons of it and I'm halfway through season two and season two is about a different doctor. So season one's about one doctor in Texas. So y'all Texas people might not want to watch it, but he's, he's, he's in prison now. So it's okay. Uh, season two is about like an Italian doctor. So it's kind of crazy. Debbie has seen Dr. Death. He was in Plano. Yes, Amy, that was him. And the guy they got to play him was Jonathan Jackson. Do you remember Pacey from Dawson's Creek? <laughs> I'm like, not him. <laughs> he, was, he used to be a heartthrob back in the day. I'm like, they can't make him a bad guy. He always seemed like such a good guy. <laughs> you love Sarah. Yeah, y'all probably have lots in common with Sarah. Have you ever considered leading a daily devotion or a Bible study? Y'all, I told y'all at the, almost the hour mark, my phone does this in StreamYard. So um, I'll answer your question while I fix this. Um, I have actually been thinking about it. And I was a little, I don't know. Let me just say, I was a little scared. Sorry, don't look up my nose. <laughs> there we go. I fixed it. I've been a little scared to like throw it out there. I don't know why I'm intimidated by it because I've done Bible studies in person with people before and I was nervous to do those, but it went really well. I think I just, I put too much pressure on myself that I'll say something wrong or do something wrong or whatever. But I literally was thinking about it the other night and I was like, Lord, if this is something you want me to do, you're going to have to make it clear to me. <laughs> and so I don't know who commented this. But, I mean, that feels like a clear sign that I probably should be doing something like that if I've been thinking about it. And then all of a sudden, somebody asks me that. So, here I am, Lord, send me. <laughs> Why do things like that? I can go on live and paint with you guys, and that doesn't scare me. But leading a Bible study scares me. Why does that scare me? I guess it's because, like, I know the consequences if I do it wrong. Or if I say something wrong that is not in accordance with God's will, which I don't think I ever would, like not knowingly anyway. Um, there's, it's definitely, there's a lot of pressure with that. Yeah, I do. I do teach kids at church. So I definitely could, could teach adults as well. I'll just pretend like y'all are my Bible class kids. Sheila said, I knew it was time to go to bed when I was painting my truck and I dozed off, dropped my paintbrush on the door hanger. <laughs> oh, to be a fly on the wall, Sheila. I wish you'd caught that on camera. Would you really? If I did do a Bible study kind of thing, I think it would almost have to be like through Zoom or something so that like, let me just put it this way. I don't want to push it on anybody for sure. I definitely don't want to like force it on anybody that's not interested. And so I feel like it's like, in. I, I give you the invite to the Zoom and if you show up, it's because you want it, right? It's not because it's being pushed on you. It's offered and you can take it or leave it. So if you guys like that idea, maybe we'll, maybe we'll start off one and do one in May and see how it goes. Um, Jennifer says, I would love to be a part of a Bible study. Go check out May May Made. May 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 Made? I've never heard of her. Bible studies on Sundays. Okay. All right. Y'all, y'all are going to hold me accountable. Okay. Okay. We've gotten all the base coat done. And aren't these colors so pretty? They're so pretty. This was the original. So we flipped it and we made it more like sunflowers with a red flower here. So um, I think I want to take like a darker red and kind of do a little bit of like a shade, like shaded something around this flower. Let me see what I got. I think these two colors might work real well together. This is the watermelon slice. That's the color we used. And this is the Tuscan red we were talking about. So let me put a little bit of this in here. This is the two colors side by side. Um, let's start with a damp surface. Oh, hang on. I lost my comments. There they are. You would like that? Okay. All right. Casey, I know Casey is really good. She does them all the time and she's very good at them. 
Okay, loading both colors up on my brush. This is what my brush looks like. Can you see that? And I'm going to start on the outside, going around the edge of the flower, following the curve with the dark color on the outside of the curve. Ooh, that is pretty. So pretty to together. Load it up again. We're going to go the opposite direction. I have to get quiet for a minute because I'm like concentrating. <laughs> um, Lori says that'd be great if you did. Okay, all signs point to yes, I guess. We'll do it. I do feel like I've been been gliding towards something like this for a while now. Um, and I've just been too scared to do it or to like announce it on my own. So I'm glad somebody brought it up and asked about it. Because if you guys want me to do a Bible study, I'll be happy to do one. I just didn't want to feel like I was forcing it on anybody. So I was a little scared to make the offer, I guess. Look how pretty this is. Add a couple of little extra petals here and there. I think I probably shouldn't, should have like, I don't know. That's probably enough. <laughs> Stop while you're ahead. Uh, Kay says, I need it in my life. I love Bible studies. I would definitely, hey, Trisha Reinhardt. I don't, so you were the one who asked. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Stacy loves Bible studies. Okay, all right. Y'all y'all convinced me. <laughs> okay. Um, I really like the shading on that flower. That's pretty. I'm trying to decide if I want to do, I think I want to do a little bit of shading on our, our umbrella. Let's do, let's get this. Is this dark enough? Yes. So the color we used was stormy. This is Royal Navy. It's a darker blue. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of shading on our umbrella with that. My paint bottle is starting to get a paint booger right in the lid here and it's kind of crusty so i'm like let's pull that off before it gets worse because it kind of keeps your bottle from being able to close and get a tight seal and then you get paint boogers inside your inside your bottle okay spritz in our our door hanger here and we're going to pick up a little bit of that royal navy on the corner and i'm just going to go down the edge of the outer edge of our umbrella with this color Okay, I'm going to wipe some of that off because I feel like I got too much. Dampen my brush a little bit. And now with just barely any water on my brush, I'm just going to smooth this out. Kind of soften it. Fade it going up a bit. Okay, let's go down the other side. Whoops, hang on. <laughs> I always like to keep the, the, the shading color on the same corner of my brush. I accidentally dipped the wrong corner. So, oh, this is dry. Keep it wet. Get a little more water on my brush. When the paint's not gliding and pulling along, you probably need a little more water. And then if you feel like you've got too much paint, you can rinse your brush and just kind of like wipe it off on a paper towel. So I've got like a little piece of paper towel here. I'm dipping in the water, picking it back up because I got too much kind of like right through here. Wipe, 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 wipe it off. And just keep softening it. Whoop, I got it on the leaf. Keep softening it up till it gets to the shade that you like. That's that's exactly right, Denise. Um, she said, follow God's direction and your Bible study will work. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's excuses is what it is. The reason why I haven't done it is fear. And that's just another excuse. Because that's the devil telling me that I don't have what it takes or that I'm going to mess it up. But really, if I show up with a pure heart and intentions and I follow what's in the Bible, God is going to lead the Bible study and he's going to give the increase. And I, I really can't mess it up as long as I go into it with that sort of attitude. 
I had just a tiny bit of blue on my brush. So I'm just kind of shading that up into this corner here. That's a good idea, Leanne. Yes. You could purchase the beginner's course if you're not ready to join PC. My brush is a little dry. I'm trying to dampen it up a little bit. And I'm trying not to get it on that pedal that I extended down. I got it over the line. I was trying to keep it to the left of this laser etched line so that it felt like a shadow of the way the umbrella was laying. So I'm kind of cleaning it up where I accidentally got it over the line there. Okay, do this one. Let's go down the outside of it. This is kind of a little bit more than I normally do when it comes to shading, but you know, we're. We're trying to show like what somebody who's been in the clubhouse for a few months might start to experiment and try, which is shading techniques like this. So last night we painted very much like a beginner would. Tonight's a little bit more advanced. So if you can't do this right away, don't feel bad. It has taken me a long time to even get slightly comfortable with this. and I'm still not super good at it. Sorry, I'll read y'all's comments in a minute. This is very labor intensive and I gotta work quickly because it dries so fast. We gotta hurry up and finish this so I can go watch Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not that obsessed yet. Okay, I need to step back from it for a second because I feel like I, it's a little harsh in a couple of spots and I think I need to soften it up. Like right through there, it feels a little harsh. I just told y'all at the beginning of this live I was not a perfectionist, but when it comes to shading, if it don't look just right, I do get a little bit like goofy over it and try to try to get it just right. Whoa, I don't like what that did. Okay, I think I'm just going to have to dry it and just see where we're at. Okay, uh, let's see. What have you guys been saying? Because I missed, I feel like, a lot of comments. Where did I get the misting bottle? Priscilla, this one's from Hobby Lobby on the stamp, rubber stamp aisle. You know what I'm talking about? Where the rubber stamping and like the alcohol inks and all that are? That's where I got this. <laughs> Elizabeth says I should show them your color swatch pages. Elizabeth is one of our clubhouse members who has every single DecoArt Americana paint color with the exception of four colors. And she's working on completing her collection. <laughs> yes, Jennifer, that is a high possibility. Uh, if you remember, and here we'll have a mini Bible study right now. If you remember the story of Philip and the eunuch in the Bible, the eunuch was traveling along and he was a religious man and he was trying to read some of the Bible. And he didn't quite understand what he was reading. And God provided Philip to him. And Philip stopped the eunuch's chariot. And he said, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch said, how can I unless some man guides me? And so Philip sat down with the eunuch and studied with him. And they learned about um, how to be saved. And he said, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip took the eunuch down into the water and baptized him. And he went on his way rejoicing. And so I think if anybody is looking for spiritual guidance, God is going to make somebody available to them to help them. So this may be that. Uh, Shanice, I'm going to go post in the clubhouse about the starter pack as soon as this live's over. Thank you for that reminder because I did say that at the beginning of the live. I'll put the link in there in the clubhouse for you guys. Oh, Rebecca. Wonderful. I'm so glad you're back. So good to have you. 
And <laughs> Dixie said, I just need one more episode of Grace. I'm going to be hooked. Uh, Carrie says, there's a nice spray bottle in the fine art section that does a fine mist that I really like. Does it look differently than that one? I didn't know if Hobby Lobby sold them on other aisles, but you know how they'll like rebrand stuff. Okay. I think we're getting pretty close to being done. We need to do something up here on this. And I'm kind of thinking well, I'm leaning toward doing the leopard print because that's what was kind of on the example. Um, now it was leopard print with like gold glitter. So I may take, I have to, oh, here's one. I may take a gold paint and just do, this still has the plastic seal on it. Do a little bit of gold spots and then we'll do some leopard around that. Put this in here. This is Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold from DecoArt. Pick a little bit of that up with my round tip brush. This is the smallest round tip brush from the Southern Adornment Signature Paint Brush Set. And I'm just going to dab. Let's make those a little bigger. So we're kind of making like really messy polka dots. So just kind of dab them. They don't have to be rounded. They can kind of just be little like blobs. And it's going to look kind of crazy for a minute till we get it looking like leopard print. Do some kind of going halfway on and halfway off. Okay, let's do the next one. I love leopard print. We put it on just about everything, I feel like. And what's funny about that is I remember in the late 90s, early 2000s. Whoops, I got my finger in the paint. Uh, do you remember everybody, like every home decor store had like jungle themed stuff. You could get zebra stuff for your living room or leopard print or giraffe print. And I was like, that is so not cool. I don't understand why people like that. <laughs> but I was a kid and I'm like, I don't understand. Why do, why do women like leopard print? And now I'm like, put it on everything. I'm not crazy about like zebra and giraffe, but I mean, I'll slap leopard print on just about anything. My mother-in-law's living room was like a whole jungle theme. She had like elephants and giraffes and zebras on pillows and throw blankets and everything. It's so funny. She doesn't anymore, but she did back when all that was popular. Kathy, if you're watching, your living room was like a jungle. <laughs> Anybody else have that going on? Uh, what's an OG sister, Leanne? That's just our loving way of saying like or somebody who's been in the clubhouse since the very beginning, like original gangsta. They've been in there a long, long time. Boy, that gold pops, doesn't it? Ooh, can't miss it. Hey, Lisa. Susan says, my husband and I looked at a house with jungle wallpaper in one room. Whew, I bet you were like, that is coming down immediately. Okay, let's dry this. <laughs> Sheila said, I like, like the really skin old, skinny bottle on the fine art aisle, four in a package. Um, we do have these, too, that we gave out with our Americana truck kits, and they do a nice fine mist. It's kind of like a pocket size. That gold does cover good, really good. So our example had leopard print in gold glitter, and then it's got like a dark brown going around it. So let's grab a dark brown. We'll do dark chocolate. Not gonna need much of this, so I'm just gonna dip right out the bottle here with my little round tip brush. And we're just gonna kind of go around the edge of each of these little leopard spots. I'm not going 100% all the way around, but like two thirds or three quarters of the way and then some of them, I'm like breaking it up and doing like a wiggly little parentheses on each side of the dot. And then some of them, I'll kind of like go almost all the way around. So I just change it up so that no two dots are exactly alike. There's one. And I may have to hold this up for y'all to really see this because I feel like the gold is so bright. You can't even see this brown right now. Although Lisa Howell, if she's watching, she probably can see it. She watches me on a 75-inch screen TV. 
Lisa, I pulled myself up on my TV in my sunroom today just to see what it would look like to watch me on a TV that big. And I was horrified. I was like, oh my goodness. And that TV in there, I think is 70 inch. So I thought of you today when I did that. I was like, oh my, this is what I look like to Lisa. But you can, you can really see what it is I'm showing on the screen with the TV that big. That's for sure. Oh, show. Notice how precise I am with this leopard print. I mean, I'm just putting it on there. Got to be, got to be real careful with that. Okay. I think we're ready for final details. Let me show you the leopard print up close. Cute. Look how cute. Comments, questions. <laughs> Lisa joined the clubhouse today. Welcome, new PC sister. Yeah, Tammy, you can buy this cutout from us. Um, I will drop the link for you for where to find it. It's called Umbrella Blooms. Now, this link is going to send you to our website where the template and the wood blank are. So if you're wanting the wood blank, select blank. Template is where you like print it out and trace it on something. Thank you, Molly. You will get better at this, Tammy. Do not stop. Do not give up. Do not do pass go and collect $200. I was going to say do not pass go. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's a Monopoly reference. And that sounds like I'm saying you should stop. So that's confusing. Okay. Rinsing that little round tip brush out. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to add some black lines. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do black lines or if I wanted to do something else, but I, I just like how clean it, and how it makes all the colors pop. So I'm getting my little round tip brush and my black paint. If this terrifies you, get you a little paint, paint pen, like a three millimeter paint pen. They do have one in our little starter pack. And we're just going to whoop, do a little swipe. Whoop, do another little swipe. Accent these little petals. Trust the process. Because I know you're probably like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Do a little ziggy zag around your your flowers top here. Whoop. Let it trail off. It's okay. Do like a little mini one right here because it's kind of like going behind the flower. Then for this, we're just going to start in the middle and we're just going to zigzag and wiggle waggle on the way out. That's a very technical painting term. Zigzag and wiggle waggle. Bring it all the way out. Don't make it like a perfect flower petal. Just keep going out. Accent your little, your little leaves here. Might do a little wiggle in the middle of the leaf too, like that. I like the whimsy. Do one here and then here. Accent that pointed tip. Remember how we reshaped those petals? And then this one, we're going to have to really like start at the point and bring it in. Start at the point and bring it in. Notice I'm like putting my pinky finger down and I'm pulling like this. So it's like riding on a roller skate. My pinky finger is the roller skate. So just make sure your paint's dry because if your pinky finger runs across it, you may mess it up. But it's kind of like a little kickstand there for keeping my hand steady. You can rotate your door hanger if you need to. Like I'm having a hard time getting over there, so I'm just going to rotate it. It always works better if I'm pulling that paintbrush towards my body. So if you struggle with control and smooth lines, pull, pull that paintbrush br towards you instead. Do a little zigzag along the bottom of there. A little swipe across the top. I forgot to do this one. Zigzag. Swipe. What do you think? Are you using a thin brush? This is the second, or this is the smallest one in my brush set. So if you buy this brush set, it, there's another one that's longer and skinnier. It's more like a liner brush, but this is the shorter one. It holds more paint, so that's why I'm using it. The other round tip brush is much thicker, and we would be having really thick lines with that one, so I'm not using that one. This is the smaller one. Okay. Uh, we've done all the florals. Let's do our little umbrella top here. Started in the middle and curved out. 
and I'm going to come down and meet that curve. Think of it like doodling. You're doodling on your door hanger. It's okay if you have to, you know, fill in with a few little dot dots and make it kind of whimsical. Okay, let's do the bottom of our umbrella here, starting on the edge. Pull that brush down and towards your body. Oops, almost got wiggly on that one and made it a little wompy right there. If you really, truly mess it up really badly, if you're like, oh my goodness, I dropped my paintbrush, it rolled across the design, ruined it, get a baby wipe out. Wipe it up before it dries and then go again. Don't beat, on, don't beat up on yourself about it. Happens to everybody. There we go. Now, hey, Corey. Corey must be watching me from work. Do I need to call your boss, Corey? Corey, we call him Uncle Corey around here if you're brand new. Um, he's like he's like a brother to me. He comes over and eats dinner with us on Sunday nights, but he's working this weekend. Now I'm just adding a little swipe or a highlight on lots of little areas. I'm not usually live at night, am I, Corey? I'm usually in the daytime. Let's do a little highlight here. Accent that shape. Kind of highlighting the petals, just doing little swipes. And I'll do a little bit in the middle of our flower. There we go. Okay. Oh, I wanted to do some on the on the umbrella. Hold on. Like just to accent those little those little shapes. Felt like it needed to be bigger or something. I don't know. What is the blue paint called? Um, Stormy. And then we did a shadow with Royal Navy. And then the polka dots are the Stormy with white added. <laughs> Yvonne's here. She says, hey, Uncle Corey. So does Elizabeth. <laughs> you don't want me calling your boss. <laughs> do your brushes have number sizes? Lori, they were supposed to, but they do not. Uh, because I asked them to put trust the process on the handle. What I didn't know was when they put that on there, they removed the brush sizes. And I was like, there's no brush sizes. So if I reorder these to do like another round of them, we will have brush sizes on them next time because they were supposed to have brush sizes this time and they don't. So that, that's kind of a bummer. Um, Anything else? Corey says it's UK blue. He thinks any shade that's remotely close to this is UK blue. <laughs> okay. What do you think, guys? Here's our finished door hanger. There's the one we painted last night. We traced it on a little wood round. That was closer akin to like the original colors on the template. We flipped it to kind of make it like little sunflowers, which I love with a little touch of gold there. If you enjoyed this, you would really enjoy the Painters Clubhouse, and that's what this is all about. We are talking about the Painters Clubhouse this week. We want you to come and join us in our membership. Um, so if you, you know, feel like you struggle to learn stuff like this on your own, you can follow my step-by-step -step instruction in the Painters Clubhouse. Um, Patricia, you like this one better? You like it better? Thank you. Um, we have Zoom paint parties you can take part in. We have challenges. We give you two templates every month, and painting tutorials that stay on trend so that, you know, you continue to learn and then also have things that you can sell if you choose to. You can teach these designs at paint parties and you can be a part of our community in the clubhouse. <laughs> Heather likes it much better with those two little leaves underneath the red flower. <laughs> I left them off right there. Whoops. Um, okay. If you haven't made your decision to join the clubhouse yet, you have one more night or Wait, what's today? Today's Saturday. I'm painting this design one more time tomorrow night. You can chat with me about it then. Um, I'm doing another Painters Clubhouse member interview tomorrow. We've got our Americana Truck Parade tomorrow afternoon in the truck in the Americana Truck Facebook group. So you can come join me there. And then Monday night will be the last night that I'll be doing a big put push for the clubhouse because we're closing the doors on Friday, next Friday. Um, we won't be opening it up again until... September likely. So um, we'll be doing a live Q&A that night. You can chat with me, ask questions. If you missed the live that I did earlier today, I shared a door hanger 
uh, Hall of Fame, which was essentially my way of showing you guys some designs that we've had in the clubhouse that we've taught in the past. So if you're curious about what kind of projects we do in there, you can go watch that live from earlier today. It's on Facebook and YouTube. Sheila says, do it. You won't regret it. <laughs> and we're not like the gym. We're not going to hold you hostage for an entire year. If you do it for two or three months and then you, you know, need to leave at any time, you're allowed to do that. Um, but we would love to have you come be a part of it. Amy wants to know if Uncle Corey is going to be at Southern Adornments Live. Yes, he will be. He's excited about it. He has already taken off work. He's planning on it. If you want to come join us in person, Southern Adornments Live is happening November 15th and 16th in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. We'll be selling tickets again May 3rd through the 12th. So you can look forward to that. Okay, guys, I'm going to go watch some Grey's Anatomy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.